Hello, everyone. This is the June Cataloging Special Interest Group of COHA US. Welcome. We are being recorded, and the chat will be captured and posted in the comments section below the video on the COHA US YouTube channel. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone, and I'd like to mention that I'm coming to you today from Huchun, the ancestral and unceded lands of the Chochenyo speaking Wekmo Ohlone tribe. And we had some questions submitted ahead of time. So the first thing I'd like to dive into today is analytics, cataloging records for articles, things that are within something else, sometimes called in analytics. I've looked up some resources that I'm going to put in the chat. Heather? Yes. Could I make an announcement before we get deep into everything? Of course, please. So Koha Khan is going to be coming up in September. I think it's September 20th through 23rd in Lawrence, Kansas. And we are currently accepting uh, present uh, proposals for presentations um and they are due this friday so if you want to make a presentation at the koha Khan conference you still have time to submit uh, a presentation proposal uh, you can just go to the koha us website and um click on the conferences link and there should be a a link there for the presentation form and watch that site will be soon coming up with um you know the schedule and uh registration and all those things so looking forward to kohakon in september and will it be in person or remote it will be all of those things it is hybrid so you can come to Kansas, you can stay home and watch it. Uh, it'll be recorded so you can watch it later. Uh, when you say Friday, is that Friday is in tomorrow? J yeah, June 3rd. Uh, that's what I was afraid of. Lauren, uh, look for my email later this afternoon. <laughs> okay. And um, do proposals have to be any set length or can you submit, say, a short topic? So on the form, there is uh, there are three options, actually. You can do a presentation that's uh, we have them as like 25 minutes and, you know, five minutes of questions. They don't actually have to be that long. I mean, if you had something that's a little bit shorter, sure, why not, you know, put it in. We have 55 minutes, so a longer, deeper topic. And we also have guided learning opportunities, which I believe are going to take place on the last two days, which are generally these sort of workshop hack fest type days. So you can do a guided learning opportunities and there's an option on the proposal form to submit for something like that too. Great, that sounds like it would be really wonderful for people to submit cataloging related things. Think about it. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. So getting back to the wonderful world of analytics, uh, the, the resources, I've put a lot of resources I know about in the chat. If anyone knows of anything else, please do share. And one of the questions that came with analytics was, what field do you put the information in? So say I'm cataloging an article, where do I put the information for the magazine itself that's hosting this. There's a lot of confusion between linking entry fields, which are marked 76X through 78X versus series fields, 490, typically 830 pairing. And the way I sometimes will it 
explain these things is that in analytics are like families. It's like the magazine or anthology is the parent who's rich and has a really big house and the article or chapter or song on an album is like the teenage kid living at home. And when you've got a family relationship, those are linking entry fields, those seven, six X and seven, eight X. It's like with a serial that changes its title, that's say the child who has gotten married and changed their name, but they're still living at home in the big family compound. So that's a seven, six X, seven, eight X linking entry field. Now series say the Aubrey Maturin novels or the Loeb Classical Library, they are like a street where it's, it's been a, it's, it's a suburban development. So all the houses look the same, but each house is hosting a completely different family. The only thing they've got in common is that they're all in houses that look the same, like they're in bindings, they're books and bindings that look the same. It's a monographic series. It's the uh, University of California Davis Studies in Chocolate all looking the same. They're completely standalone families doing their own thing, being their own books, being their own titles. But they're, they're in this, these wrappers that look the same. The publisher has issued them to look the same. And that's kind of their relationship. That's a series. Now, does anyone have um, any specific questions. Um, I'm hoping that people who use the easy analytics feature in Koha will have some input. I don't use that feature, so I'm not really familiar with it. Well, I'm sneaking up on this manually. Uh, we've, my organization had, you know, 17 different magazines, and then we decided to merge them all and publish them under one cover for a while. And yet the internal magazines kept their own volume and issue numbers that were separate from the, the whole assembly. Um, the sort of thing you get with people who've not worked in a library and seen what kind of mayhem this causes. And uh, in the meantime, everything's changing names. Yes, uh, um, there are ways in a serial record to record two different numbering systems. And some of the linking entry field relationships are absorbs and is absorbed by. Yes, and those have been put to good use here. Um, but it is slow and tedious work, particularly for somebody who didn't bother to set up control numbers in the beginning. Now in the process of correction. Um, and that's, that's one thing that, Took me a while to catch on to is that the uh, the linkage between these different things is done with a your your library id identification in parentheses followed by your control number bloody obvious to the people who have been around the block hard to discover for those of us who are new to the neighborhood hi sorry i'm late getting back from a doctor's office no problem lauren <laughs> Bruce, um, if you use the automatic link to host records, it fills in the biblio number and the item number. Okay. Which is the same as the control number. What I am, so we're on 2105. Before this, when you use the auto, it would put the 773 information in both records. 2105 doesn't do that. It just puts it <laughs> in the parent record okay. and doesn't do anything to the child record. So now I'm trying to figure out how, is it supposed to be that way? 
Well, yes, it's supposed to be that way. The child is supposed okay. to link to the parent. The parent is not supposed to link to the child. But okay. there are bugs that um, in Bugzilla about this. Are you saying it's not supposed to, to link in the, the automatic system or it's not supposed to link at all? Because there's, there's fields set up for that, just that parent and child link. Well, the child, the child is supposed to always link to the parent because yeah. you need that in order to page it and to find it because no it's sitting inside this something else. But, you know, the, uh, the cataloging standards as applied are that the parent doesn't necessarily link to all the children. Now, your catalog, your users, your service... Kind of maybe that. yeah maybe it, you want it, the parent to link to you the just child. pick yeah. another 700 line and put it in the parent and that's been working well for me oh and we have uh, something in the comment uh good images it's confusing because magazines are called serial publications but it sounds like you're saying the different volumes of a continuing range of publications should link in 700s not list the serial title in the 400s for example some health brochures all published with the same format and the same overall titles but different health issues addressed yeah um yeah that sounds series like yeah series versus serial is it's, it's kind of a spectrum it non-binary uh if you had different health brochures that are standing alone and do not have any numbering sometimes numbering is is a real indicator yeah, if it's got a volume and issue number it's pretty likely a serial exactly if it doesn't have a volume and issue number it's probably a series series, 4XX, 8XX, serial, linking entry field, 76 to 78X. Um, sometimes libraries decide how to catalog this based on how they're receiving it. Acquisitions is going to influence this. Uh, if, you, if your acquisitions people need a subscription record, you're probably going to have a serial record for it, even if it is a series, but you might be cataloging the titles differently. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, 700s, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beg to differ. A 700 is an added entry for a personal name. So we're, we're talking, and I'm gonna put this in the chat, 76X to 78X are, Linking entry fields. Yeah, Siri, series in for 4XX, 8XX. Your 4XX, if you need an access point, the access point is always the 8XX. The 4XX, usually a 490, is exactly transcribed. It's a transcription field used for identification always exactly transcribed from the item or some other source, publisher description, something like that. The access point, the controlled access point is always an 8XX, usually an 830 for title. Um, you don't necessarily need a 4XX, you can use a note. And for example, in my library, we like to put uh, like the Aubrey Maturin novels, we want them on the shelf in order, volume one, volume two, volume three, volume four, so people can just grab them and read them in order, but we don't have them all published the same. So sometimes we'll throw up a note, a 500 note saying, this is the fifth novel to feature uh, Captain Aubrey and Stephen Maturin. And then we do the controlled 8XX field. I'm dealing with a number of series of novels by Catherine Kurtz. And she's, it, first of all, I have to sit down and read part of them to figure out which series they're in. In figuring out uh, if, if novels are in a series, I often find that sources like librarything.com are really helpful. Um, sometimes Goodreads. 
they tend to have, they tend to, being something of a wiki, they tend to track them, Wikipedia even. Uh, the authors sometimes also have websites. Um, if it's old, say you've got something from the 1940s or 1920s, uh, sometimes you can search uh, databases. Yes, fantasticfiction.com for fantasy and science fiction. Thank you. Yep. Periodical databases uh, going back, or, you know, New York Times, if you have access to that, uh, the reviews. When they review novels, they could say, this is the latest to feature uh, these characters. And it's like, ding, ding, ding. I've got, I've got something going on here that's like a series. The, the nice authors put the complete list in the front of each book, but that's not to be expected <laughs> and doesn't help you with the first novel. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But users usually always appreciate this going into the bibliographic record, especially if they've stumbled across a novel and they like it and they want to know more if there is this information in the bibliographic record that they can click and then, you know, put their holds on the rest of the series. And, you know, adaptations. Adaptations also tend to, you can use these linking entry fields for adaptations. So say, and, and we're getting referberizing here, you know, you want, you want to be able to relate the Hobbit movie to the Hobbit novels that you have in your collections. Yeah, my, my problem is more like linking historical fiction to the bi historical biographies. Mm -hmm. But that that has some great potential since they tend to be shelved in far different corners. Yes. And I want to make a pitch here too for the fact that our cataloging sig does have an email group. Feel free to ask, throw it up to the group and say, hey, this is a little squirrely. I feel like I'm hurting cats. What do y'all think? Do I have a series here? Do I have a serial? <laughs> What field would you use for serials to link those together? Would it, I don't think it would use the, ser the series field, but I, I don't know. Those linking entry fields. Okay. 76X to 78X. Okay. Yeah. If, if it is a serial with that kind of family relationship, it, it's continued, continued by, absorbed, absorbed by, split into, you know, that- I've got them all. Yeah, the two, <laughs> the two kids are, man, they're doing their own thing. They've changed their name. They're establishing their own identity, but, you know, they're still living in the family compound. They're still, you know, in touch with mom and dad because they're getting their allowance. That's a split into. I think so, we need to do a presentation at the next COA con and have pictures of all the family <laughs> of oh, cats, yeah. even, you know? I, we I'm, could. I'm this close to putting up a wall display to help myself understand where these things are going. <laughs> Yes. I've actually I've actually used genealogical software to show the relationships in, in just our own <laughs> primary publication. Well, Bruce, I'm thinking you could be doing a nice presentation or even some nice uh, handouts for the COHA website. So right. we have a question here. Where would the adaptation information go so it would link? Um, there is this wonderful linking entry field, a 787 other relationship entry, and you can pair it with a 580 note that explains the relationship. Now, again, make sure your COHA catalog is linking, that these links work, that the 787 is working. You got to test this out. If, if it's not working well, or you're uncomfortable using these fields, you can simply explain the relationship simpler. You can explain the relationship in a 500 note. 
and say use a 700 in like in my example with the hobbit say you know i've got the dvd of the movie i can i can put in a 500 note that says adaptation of the novel the hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien and put a 700 feel for Tolkien, double dagger T, Hobbit, you know, as a controlled and every single Koha catalog that will work. That's, that's the old school way that we're doing it, but implementing all these linking entry fields with ferberization is boldly going. My catalog, it works beautifully but it depends on what version you are, et cetera. Yes, Bruce? The term ferberization. Oh, okay. Please no. <laughs> I'm sure it means nothing useful. <laughs> Is that with a T, H, or an F? Um, Ferber, if I'm remembering correctly, is, okay. yes, functional requirements for bibliographic records. There is a uh, Wikipedia article, but there is also, <laughs> yes, Jason, Jason says shutters. Um, there's, there's an OCLC article on OCLC's region, research activities and the IFLA's functional requirements for bibliographic records. IFLA, another acronym here, International Federation of Library Associations. So um, I'm going to put a link to the article here. And when you're using worldcat.org, which is the public interface to the OCLC database, you, you can see Ferberized records. You'll you'll see a title, and I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can pull one up for us. And it'll say you know it'll cl like cluster all the editions together, and that's kind of living the dream. Yeah. Uh, the dream of these Ferberized records is say you have one work record for The Hobbit, kind of abstract, like the the philosophical thing <laughs> of The Hobbit. And it has, say, perhaps tabs, books, DVDs, plays, audiobooks, the manuscript in, in the Tolkien papers, all the manifestations. So here, I'm going to put a link in the chat to, for a search, therberization, everything shapeless with lots of dogs. Yeah. Now that link to the WorldCat search, it's not completely ferberized because you're seeing say, it's got the audiobook, but it then has a link, all formats and languages, all editions, The Hobbit, book large print, all formats and languages, all editions. So it's got some ferberization in that all the audiobooks are clustered, all the large print, hard copy, books are clustered. And these, these- Heather, I don't know if you, sorry, Heather, I don't know no, if you noticed I ahead. threw a question, a question in before the one about the adaptation information about articles within the serials. So I, I wonder if you could address that. Thank I you. I think we may have gone over this before, but, but uh, I need it several times. Yeah. It takes several times. And the thing about these little weird cataloging things is they come up infrequently. So it's like, oh, wait a minute, what do we do? So an article within the serial is, that's what's usually referred to as an analytical record or an in-analytic. An article, and you're cataloging just that article in the larger serial because it's important to your users. It's, it was written by a local author. It's written by one of the library staff. We're cataloging that one so people can find that. That's the in-analytic, sometimes called the child record 
the serial is sometimes called the parent, and that's the linking entry. Does that answer your question, Julie? Thanks. Yes, that's helpful. So then it goes in the, um, okay. Then me, it goes in the 760s or 780s, you're saying? Yes. Seven. So, so Got you, it. Okay. So you get, you get a, a biblio record for the article that has no items because it's a part of something else. Is that right? Yes. And now it, it can or cannot have an item record. People do different things here. Uh, some people put in item records, and I do because I want to say have something that displays. And in the call number field, we we write magazine article to let people know. And I want that item ID in case I want to do some batch item edits. Okay, let me let me throw some mud in our faces here. There is an article that was published in 32 parts in magazines put out by two different organizations mm -hmm. and our organization had magazines with three different titles where do we bring together all 32 issues so you're going to have one in analytic record the 300 field is going to look really strange. It's going to have page uh, 7 to 12, comma, page 32 to 34, comma, page blah, 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 comma, page blah, 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 comma. It's going to look really weird. Or you're going to do something like um, various pagings. Yeah. And then you're going to have multiple. 773 fields for the host item entries for each one. And you're going to be using in your 773 a subfield G, I believe it is. Let me double check to make sure I'm saying yes. So the subfield G is going to be saying things, or you're going to have your, your subfield T to link to that host magazine for just that. And your subfield G is going to have something like part one volume 12, number three, pages, blah, 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 blah. And then you're going to have another 773 that says part two. Okay. And you're going to have all 32 parts so that someone can chase all that. And that'll get me through until we publish them all as a book, which brings a whole nother pile yes. of worms in. Yes. I was just thinking of Charles Dickens, all the novels yes. being serialized. Yes. Or Sherlock Holmes stories. That, that's yes. why I'm asking. I figure this is not a unique uh, yeah. piece of stupid. And oh. in the case of something like uh, the Sherlock Holmes stories or a Charles Dickens serialized novel, say uh, all those issues of, you know, say the Charles Dickens novel was published in the U.S. in Harper's Weekly. Yeah. And those are now online at archive.org. I can do one in analytic record with the 856 fields to the issues at archive.org for each part. Well, I've probably said this before, but uh, you really do need item records, even if it's just uh, in 952 with a couple of dates and what it is, because without it, uh, COA tends to, well, I know you can't export things. There's my experience is you can't export something without uh, really something in the 952. Yeah, it, it, it really helps. <laughs> you don't need a bot barcode you don't need a call number no. you just need something we have the uh, in our catalog we have the location you know it's it, you can see in that i i link to a, a list in our catalog with some we have we have some in analytic records that are for the book plates inside mm -hmm. the books we have a question from julie did you want to ask it live or is it related to an aim <laughs> Insane, yeah. I think. Yeah, it, get, it gets a little 
mentally gymnastic. I have two questions on your 856. One, do you have an example where you have multiple 856 for each volume? Because I have, I have two records that I know that has this. And what they've done is used the item record. Each item record holds the URL. For each part and I'm like that works because I don't know what it's supposed to be I think it's supposed to be the 856 I think you'd prefer it to be the 856 but I don't know how to get 856 to do that I do I have I have a record with multiple 856s and then another related question and oh, our I'll just before okay. let, me, let me ask you put a Okay. Slight pin in that. One reason why we prefer the multiple 856 fields is they show in the browse list. Your item records are not going to come up. Yeah. And when you've got the browse list, then yeah. So I'm going to put in the link. Okay, well, I'm putting the links in the chat. What's your what's your next question? Okay. The next question, are 856 um in your search results, it'll say not available or available for loan. And I wanted to say available for download. How do I get, co I, I have a feeling it's a setting somewhere um, that needs to be turned on or we're using the wrong field for something. I, I think uh, if you want to change that available for reference, available for loan, I think uh -huh. you're now going to be in the realm of XSLT or JavaScript. And I would take that question to okay. the sysadmin group. Okay. And here's a record. It's got just a couple of 856s, but you know, you can just you list the 856s. And if you take a look at this one and look at the mark, it'll show you the subfields for where you put your display text and um, so what field did I say could be used for the book plate? Ah, uh, yeah. Um, I'll put the I'll put a a link to our book plate record in the chat. And oh, thank you, Barbara. The URL link text system preference. Awesome. Thank you, Barbara. When I finally find the right preference, it's always got a reasonable name to it. But never can I find it. I have discovered the same problem. <laughs> I'm just looking at uh, my catalog. We have a lot of online books. Uh, where we get three uses of the book and then we have to buy it, uh, which is good for things that we hardly ever do uh, or need. I just have it as online book and it says available for loan. And I haven't worried too much uh, about people getting confused. So we have a, a different question, but it is related. Um, a uh, field of uh, fish curriculum guides. Where does it go about the medium? I, I'm going to refer again, I'm putting a link in the chat to OCLC bibliographic formats and standards. Very helpful, available free for all, even if you don't use OCLC, because it got great examples for microforms. And, and how you use those linking entry fields to link to the hard copy to the micro format. Hello, Sunita. Welcome. Hi. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. We've been chatting about linking entry fields and 
in analytic records and serial relationships and microformat relationships. And there's a lot in the chat, but it will be posted with the recording of the video on the YouTube channel later. So you can grab all the links and the information. And can anybody else, if they join late and are not seeing the complete chat? So does anybody have anything else they'd like to bring up, uh, either on any related to those topics or anything else? I have another question. I'm just full of questions today. Um, what do you do for a book that's a translation of another book, but it doesn't have the, it just has the translated title. They were not kind enough to yeah. put <laughs> the original language or the English translation to whatever language it is written in. And I've discovered patrons tend to like the English translation when searching for things. Where does that information go and how can I get it to link to that original language for those who are interested? Very good question. And uh, it's, it's done in different ways, of course. Um, the, the typical, I'm, I'm typing and looking up translations um, so this is done differently because, of course, people have been wanting to cluster translations for a very long time, and public libraries are familiar usually cataloging with clustering with this is the realm of uniform titles. So the uniform title field if there is an author, is a 240. You have a, a typically a 100 for the author, a 240 for the uniform title, and then the 245 for the transcribed title. So say, uh, you know, we've got um, Winnie the Pooh in Latin. We have a 100 for, uh, I'm totally blanking. Arthur Milne. Thank you. We have a 100 for Milne. We have a 240 for Winnie the Pooh, period, Latin. So 240, Winnie the Pooh, period, subfield, L for language, Latin. And then the 245, Winnie le Pooh. And then that, it clusters beautifully. Again, everybody's Koha catalog can deal with it. This is very old school. The linking works great. With Ferberizing, we have people also using linking entry fields. Again, you're getting into, um, and there are language linking entry fields for the translations that do it that way. We're not doing that. We, in my catalog, we're using 240s. And if there is no personal author, say it's the Bible, it's a 130. So 130, Bible, period, Spanish. 130, Bible, period, English. And then the 245 is transcribed. The Holy Scripture according to the et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I have a record... Yes, this is something I cataloged that did not helpfully tell me what it was a translation of. It took a little digging. It is a Spanish translation of, I mean, it did, but it took some digging because it was like, okay, it's a translation of the Young Sea Officer's sheet anchor, but we, there's so many editions of that. It was a little that crazy. Yeah. And it had a different spine title. So this record has 
a lot of things going on. Um, about the uniform title, is that the title of the book as it was originally published? Same follow the flag edition, or is it something else? And let's let's say um, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, which would be the uniform, or is there one? Or am I really confused? Yes, there 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 is one. It is usually for something published like that. It is the first publication, what it's known by, and. Harry Potter and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, where do you find what the uniform title is? Uh, I like id.loc.gov and you can look things up. If, if, however, it is something like the Bible, it is usually the best known title in the language. So for the Bible, the uniform title, as used most often in the United States, we are not going back to the Council of Nicaea and the Latin and all that. It's the Bible. Okay. Let me give you a different example. Mm -hmm. Self-published works. Mm -hmm. the, spine, <clears throat> the spine label on the spine of the book is the nutmeggers. The cover of the book is <clears throat> nutmeg notes. And the title page says the story of the Gewurztraminer family and other no <coughs> nutcracker notes. Which one do I use? Is, do we default to the title page? The title page in most of the cataloging codes throughout, uh, used in the United States, the title page in the book has precedence. However, say, uh, 50 years has gone by, and many, many, many editions of this have been published. The author was very lucky that self-published, tiny, privately printed run got noticed by Random House, and they bought it, and they put it out, and then they changed, uh, the, title. They changed the title, and it was such a hit. It, you know, it was written for children, and it was such a hit. It was made into four movies and a TV series and an anime run. And then there's the manga editions. And so from there, it was translated. You know, those Belgian comic artists, it yeah. just went around the world. I'd, I'd laugh louder if this wasn't typical. Right? And around the world, it's known as Pickle People. Yeah you're going to get a 240 of pickle people probably it's it once something is known by a best known thing and again think bible we know it as bible sometimes that'll be then established as the uniform title when you when you've got things where published in the run press runs of 50 to 100 this is usually not where you are <laughs> yeah and uh, my, my favorite are the people who don't bother with the title page they just have scribbles on the cover and the yes. spine's already been ripped off by the time I get it. If you if you don't have a title page, or say there isn't it's self-published, there isn't really a title page, then you you go to other things like the cover, usually the best source of information. And a uh, question's been asked, where will the recording be available of this? It's going to be on the Koha US website. Yes, thank you, Fred. And here's a, I mean, the Koha US YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah, Good. thank you, Fred. I was about to look that up. Do we have any other questions? I'm going to look up a, an authority record for a uniform title. Just, just a quick report. We've uh, on several occasions I've talked about the time my cat walked across my keyboard and entered a control number of three orders of magnitude greater than the ones I was using. It turns out there is an author uh, authorized value called uh, control num sequence, when you can, which allows you to change the uh, uh, the next number assigned. And it's just that simple. Good. 
I have, it's not a question, it's a clarification. So if I have a title that's, trans, it's in Spanish, so I would copy the title that's in the book that's in Spanish, and then the 240, I would create my translation of the title and put English, or I would use a different, like there's no, they weren't nice and gave me the title. Um, oh. You, you would, you would need to find, okay, say you've got a Spanish translation of something that was never Publish before say they yeah. uh say yeah. they found the manuscript in the archives mm -hmm. it, it's it's never been published the spanish is the first yeah. language of publication you probably are not going to have a uniform title for okay. the english the spanish is the one that's put it out there mm -hmm. so you're going to have a note saying yeah. translation of the manuscript in the uh you know uh by the the traveler in the uh you know in the madrid archives and maybe you know the manuscript you know it's going to have the but but there is no say there was no title that you, you know it's just it's just a, you know, yeah. a lady flitty pot's journal and i've i've got a number of pieces that are you know, translated from records found in Baron so and so's uh, cellar, and uh, you know it's a translation, and you can tell it's a translation because it's badly done. But there's, uh, you know, nowhere to to go to get back to the sources since the the castle burned out. And then let's say I have a book that's in a language, but I think people would want an English translation so that they can find it, where would I put, English is the common language. Right, um, some libraries do, the, their catalogers do do their own translations of a title and add that to a record. We don't because if okay. some, this, this item is in the foreign language there is no English in it. Is your user who only speaks English really going to want this item? Well, I, we use the English language for the uh, descriptions and the, the uh, and, and all, and just leave the, the foreign language title where it is. It's got a flag on it that says it's written in Ukrainian and you, you um, can deal with it or not. How about I have the, um, Bibliographic formats up. Um, uh, 242 translation of title by cataloging agency. Ooh. Yes. If you nice. do, if you do do that, that's where you put it. Yeah. Smarter than 240. Take credit for it. And then there's 246, varying form of title. Well, that wouldn't be a translation, would it? No, the, the 246 is for titles born by the item, known by the item, that sort of thing. The one that's on the spine rather than the title page? Yes. Yeah. I get a lot of magazines that evolve their title slowly over time without changing the numbering sequence. 246 helps a lot with those. I'm putting in the chat the, the language note, the Mark Bibliographic 546 note this is what you use to specify the language of the resource, like in French, mm. in English, French, or German. Say it's got all three in there. So we have a lot. We're a translation linguistic organization. So we have a lot of materials that are written in the indigenous language. And so sometimes they will, so, you know, Spain has several hundred languages. They're probably going to want a uniform title in Spanish for those titles. If a, if a linguist is wanting to look up families, would we put, like, would that be a subject note? Would that just be write a note? Like a translated, we've translated the title into Spanish in the 242. Yes, if you're going to, if you, if you as the cataloger are going to translate the title into the language used by your cataloging agency, 
or another language, common language, you're gonna use those 242s. Consider, consider subject headings in different languages as well. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, that's where we we want to use different subject thesauri for say um, if you're your cattle your cataloging agency, say you're cataloging in English, but you have a lot of Spanish users and indigenous language users, you're yeah. gonna want those vocabularies. You're gonna want your English language subject headings, your Spanish language subject headings, your and many you know agencies say uh, if my agency were lucky enough to start working with the Chechenyo Ohlone to develop Chechenyo headings, we would then put those in those subject. And Koha can cope with that. Koha can do different language thesauri and, and headings really well. So you would do different main headings in each language and then link them in the authority records with the 550 or have one authority record with each translation in it. So your, your subject headings are gonna be six X, X uh -huh. fields and you use your indicators to indicate the thesaurus used. So I'm gonna put in the chat, the Mark 21 format for the six X, X subject headings. And then I'm going to put in a link to the 650, so that's a, the most typical subject heading field used. And your indicators there, the second indicator says the thesaurus, and there's set ones for say, second indicator zero is your Library of Congress subject heading. It's gonna be in English, but uh, Indicator six is the repertoire de vedette matière for your French headings. And then your second indicator seven is for your source specified in subfield two. And in subfield two, that's where you're going to link to your other thesauri. So your Spanish language headings, whatever thesaurus you're using. And you're going to have separate authority records for those different language headings that are going to link to those in the subfield nine of the 650 in your Koha catalog. You're getting fancy dancy here. <laughs> you want to get fancy. The, the problem comes that Spanish isn't a language, it's a family of languages. Yeah. And uh, I've, I've run in headlong into the brick wall of the difference between Portuguese and Brazilian. Yes. So you need to take great care that you've got somebody on staff that can tell these apart. Yes, and this is why we use authority records. We're gonna pick our thesaurus. We're gonna pick our authority record. Here, here in Central Florida, you need both Puerto Rican and Cuban Spanish. Mm -hmm. And people that speak Castilian aren't understood by anyone. We have a question. What does Arlen stand for in the subfield nine? Oh, Arlen. Oh, I remember Arlen so fondly. Arlen, I remember too. Yeah, Arlen used to be a system, the Research Libraries Information Network, and libraries would use Arlen and or OCLC. It was a completely different system. It was smaller. It was a different bibliographic utility. It was smaller than OCLC, but it did not cluster records into a master record. OCLC, when you log on, you're seeing one record, a master record. In Arlen, you saw a record cluster and you can look at different libraries records. And when OCLC bought Arlen and subsumed and sucked Arlen's database into theirs and became a yet more vast and large bibliographic utility. Some of the Arlen record clusters are preserved and there are ways to see them, but it is complex. As I recall, it was also more suited to rare books for that reason. Exactly. Uh, but did OCLC also swallow WLN? 
I haven't heard from them in a long time. Yeah. Let's see. The um, WLN, I'm looking up the Western Library Network. Oh yeah, we're, we're going way back. And yes, OCLC did. Uh, did absorb. Um, I believe Sky River may still be out there. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, and you don't just have one OCLC record. And my unfortunate experience, I was trying to get uh, records for my cartoon book collection. I think one of them had about 17 different OCLC records. But usually the one that comes first uh, is the one I would use. If you do come across duplicate OCLC records, you can report them to an OCLC user, say like me, and we can use our online function to report the duplicates and to get OCLC's quality control to merge those. My access is through WorldCat and I found that Generally speaking, they are different editions. And just now I have to go back to pull a book, book off the shelf and see which one I've got. Yeah, uh, and not my experience with medical books. Uh, yeah. And I'm going through connection. Yeah, you're, 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 you're in a somewhat different world than we ancient historians. Yes. Oh, if you're a connection user, you can report duplicates. Yeah. Yeah, but I'd have to do it every time I catalog something sometimes. It's pretty fast and uh, benefits us all. Just put okay, the pitch for okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to put it all in and then open up the Z3950 once I hit 10,000 items. <laughs> well, we are at the top of the hour. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming. If you have yet more questions, please feel free to send them to the discussion list or uh, save them for next time or send them to me ahead of time if you want to be sure that uh, we discuss them during the broadcast. So I'm going to end the recording. Thank you all very much.